when I first started trading around 15 years ago, I remember there was a day I made over a thousand pounds in a minute. It was trading Forex, which was the pound against the US dollar and the price just shot up. I broke all my rules, but made a good amount of money. Now, back then in my early 20s, I was earning around 25,000 a year being a math teacher. That was a lot of money. But guess what? Over the next few days, the market took it all back. It went all back to the market. I made every error under the sun because trading is an emotional game and it's tough. That's why most people lose. So today, I'm going to share with you some key principles that I've learned over the last decade or so, really to take your trading from discretionary to systematic, to really get some rules in play so you can get a nice feel for the market to increase the odds of you making money from the markets, because that's the name of the game, right? So if you like today's content, like, subscribe, hit the bell notification. We're going to dive into Ethereum, but really look at something called Elliott Waves, which will give you a good feel for the market itself. I have this saying in life. Everything is difficult, therefore it's easy. Whether you're driving a car or whether you're learning Elliott Waves. What I learned, again, over a decade ago is that the markets tend to move in fives and threes. And if you can get this around your mind and the thinking on what really drives the markets, what is really important and what's not. So what to give more attention to and priority to and what you can almost ignore that will make a big difference. So when I'm saying fives and threes, this is the theory. We're going to go into a practical example in a second. But you tend to see a market go one, two, three, four, five. And when you see this pattern, it will tend to then do a correction. But the reverse is also true. What I mean by that is the markets can move down in a five-wave structure and then correct on an upward cycle. But when you're looking at the theory, markets are never as clean as this. What it more looks like is this. We need to be able to interpret some of this information and see what are the tools available to you that can make sense of this noise. Because when you first look at a chart, it just looks like random lines. But when you can start to understand, it's just crowd psychology playing out, buying and selling behavior. Because if you can move from a basically no rules to rules to go, right, I have a system, I have a trade plan, and I know what to do when X, Y, Z happens, then you do the following, then all of a sudden you have an edge. And then you can be the casino. Like, did you know, in the movie business, the investors of the movies, they would invest in 10 movies, but they don't actually know which one of those 10s is going to be a blockbuster hit. They know that one of them or two of them is likely to be a hit, but they have to invest in all 10. Trading is similar. We don't know which trade is going to be a big hit, but we have to take the, the following next 10 trades when the setup is there. So you have to also get comfortable with taking losses. So now let's dive into a live chart with Ethereum. And by the way, I'm going to cover a bit of detail today, quite a bit of detail. So if you're not used to doing this and you want to just take your trading to the next level, I do have a four secrets masterclass, which is free. And it dives into Elliott Waves in a lot more detail. So anything that I cover that might go over your mind because it's the first time you're hearing it, Go to the masterclass, it will break it down for you in layman's terms, and then you can come back to this particular video itself. So now let's just look at this, right? Let's just look at this. Let me just move this up here. So I'm on an Ethereum chart, and we don't know if this wave count is correct. So the truth of the matter is, when it comes to the markets, no one actually knows what's going to happen next. Just like if you're tossing a coin, you don't know if it's going to be a heads or a tails. You know it's going to be either heads or a tails, but you don't know which one. But if the odds are in your favor, as in if you win, you make a lot of money, and if you lose, you lose a little amount of money, all of a sudden you can play the game in a logical, mechanical, systemized way, which you can repeat over a series of hundreds of trades and over a period of year upon year upon year. And that's the whole thinking that we want to get into. So now when we're looking at this, this is Ethereum. It applies to all markets, all time frames. What I'm looking at here is we've had this initial move up. We've had some type of ABC correction. Again, markets tend to move in fives and threes. This is referred to as something called an irregular correction. And then we've had this nice surge in price action. And this is very common of a wave three. Right? Markets, again, when they're moving fives and threes, in the five wave structure, it's called an impulsive wave. And the wave three tends to be the most aggressive. And that's where you'll make most of your money in wave threes, more often than not. So what we're going to do is we're going to break this down. And I want to get across a concept to you 
where you can see stuff that people can't normally see if you can understand buying and selling psychology. But we're going to break it down into the fives and threes. It's called Elliott Waves. So when I'm looking at this, we got this ABC structure. If we look at this structure here, this, this wave three, we can see it's also breaking down to what looks like to be an initial move up, a correction, a very aggressive move up, a correction, and it looks like we're on the final part of a wave three. So again, I'm going relatively advanced straight off, or at least at intermediate level, but the wave three in itself tends to subdivide into microwaves. So there's waves within the waves, right? So we call it degrees of counts. And I've drawn them in different colors just to differentiate. So the macro degree count we've put into as red. The intermediate wave count we've put as blue. And then the minor wave count I've put as green. Right? And I don't want to break this down because if you can start to see the market as fives and threes, it's a quick caveat. Not all markets have a clear pattern and a structure. Around 50 to 70% of the time, there's a clear pattern. If it is, you draw it on. That gives you a good thesis of what's likely to occur next. But when there's no pattern, you just move on to the next opportunity because there's tons of different assets that you can trade, go long and go short, and you can make money on both sides. So now let's just look at this. So the red is, we've got this initial move up. One, two, three. That's what it looks like. The blue is this here. I'm just going to draw it here so you can actually see it a bit clearer. Let me draw the lines like this, the blue. And in fact, let me draw this in blue as well. So you can see it a bit clearer. So then this part, it looks like a nice wave one, a wave two of a wave three, a wave three of a wave three, a wave four of a wave three, and then it looks like a final part. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about this part of the market now. I'm going to zoom in because that's where the relevance is. Is the market going to continue up or is it likely to move down? Now, the fact of the matter is no one knows. All we can do, the best we can do is put on our Sherlock Holmes hat, look at the information that's available to us and see what the edge is pointing towards. So we're going to cover two things today. So we're talking about pattern right now. The second thing we're going to talk about is momentum. Now, markets tend to move in cycles and trends. And there's a brilliant momentum indicator. There's, in fact, there's thousands of momentum indicators. My favorite by far is something called the Stochastics RSI. But I've created something called the dashboard, which is what we're seeing over here at the bottom. And what this dashboard tells us is that the bigger trend, the technical term is overbought, which tells us that the upside is limited. But the smaller momentum trend is strong bull, which means we're in an uptrend. So what that's telling us is that the bigger degree trend, here we're regarding this as the wave three, the bigger degree trend, is close to a top based on momentum. However, the lower degree trend, here we're regarding that as the blue and the green that we're drawing over here, is still bullish. So in other words, we're likely to see some movement to the upside before we complete this wave three. So there's two indications there, saying pattern and momentum, we're likely to see some further upside movement. Now again, I'm, I'm going a bit advanced here. So what I've done for you as well is I've created a lot of training. And one of the other trainings that I've got is the Trend Identifier Dashboard. If you're used to trading, and you want to add this to your current strategy, you can now test it out for one pound. And I've done a lot of lessons so you can see how to use it's called double time frame momentum. It just takes your edge to the next level. So check it out. It's only one pound 30 days. If you like it, then you get to use it for nine pound 97 thereafter. So what I'm going to finish on today, it's relatively high level, but I think you're going to find it really, really valuable. Is we're looking at the market. I'm just going to clean this up. I'm just going to get rid of these lines for a second. By the way, the software that we're using here is called TradingView. There is a free version. You should check it out if you're not already using this. It's very, very powerful. So, again, I had a question mark. Here's the question mark. The reason I've got a question mark here is it just reminds us that this high has not been confirmed. Has not been confirmed. Right? Hence, I've got a question mark that reminds us because when you're doing an, a technical analysis, you don't want to get too much of a bias. You want to have a thesis, but also be mindful that there could be some 
price action that voids the thesis. And that's what we're going to look at next. So if this is a one, two, three, four, five, over five, over three, this is three degrees of wave counts. There's particular things that should and should not occur in this part. And I'm going to refer to it as pattern reversal signals. If it is going to be a five, we should see something. And if it is not going to be a five, and this is going to end up being the top, we should see something else. And I'm going to keep it, I'm going to try to keep it simple, but again, everything in life tends to be difficult before it's easy, especially if it's worthwhile doing. Now, I've been doing this for well over 15 years, so I want to keep it as practical as possible. So what we're going to focus on now, I'm going to finish on this, is this part of the market. There's a few key factors, and if you can understand the principles of buying and selling behavior, what should occur and what shouldn't occur. So we're going to talk about something called a price overlap. Price overlap. So if this here is a wave three, and this is a wave four, we should see the market overlap into this price structure over here, as in this overlap here. We should see the price go into this range. If it does, that gives it a higher confidence level that this low over here is going to hold, and we're probably going to see the movement of the market go up here. However, on the flip side, if the price does not overlap into this range over here and continues to the downside, well, then this looks like a wave one, two, three, four, five, well, four and five. That would indicate a different piece of information. And if it overlaps into this wave structure over here, that would then indicate that this hair is actually the top and we're probably going to start to see the sideways movement earlier than expected. So I, I may have just fried your brain a little bit. But the key thing I'm trying to get across is that you do not need to know what is going to happen in the market to make money. In fact, there is no way of actually knowing. What the best you can do is become the casino where you have the edge in your favor and you trade that edge. So one of the key things you can do over here is you can have a simple strategy that says, wait for the price to overlap into this range. And if it does, that gives us greater confidence that this is going to hold and that we're going to see a new high being made. Wait for a pullback and then look to buy and then make some money on the way up. On the flip side, if the market does end up doing some type of five-way movement to the downside, then we can say, well, actually, this then looks like the top. Wait for some type of pullback, short the market, and make money as the market moves down. So there's a concept called double think. And if you can get your head around this, it just really covers yourself in a really, really positive way, is have positive expectations that your thesis is correct, but then ask yourself the question, what is the minimum that the market should do, even if you're incorrect? And at that point, you should be looking to get risk-free and lock in some profits. Now, again, we, we covered some high-level stuff today, so I'm going to highly encourage you, because I break it down in real layman's terms, to take the Four Secrets Masterclass. It will break down Elliott Wave and Double Time Frame Momentum, as well as two other secrets that, will, again, allow you to create more of a system with your trading. Because if you don't have a system, it's hard to be consistent. But if you're consistent, then you become the casino. And the casino, the house, always wins. So if you like today's video, like, subscribe, hit the bell notification. Let's finish on a quote with my book. We're going to chapter number three today. It's Confucius, and he says the following. It does not matter how slowly you go, as long as you do not stop.